Uh, hey everybody, it's me, Ariana Grande, and welcome to another episode of Slaughtercraft. Alright, let's cut to the chase. Uh, the last episode, if you saw it, if you didn't see it, check right up there in the corner. I'll probably have a link to it. Anyways, if you saw the last episode, then you saw that I want to make a shop. And that shop is going to be for these totems of undying that I got. I got right, right here, right here, this little thing right here. But before we get to building the shop, first I would like to show you how I'm obtaining these fun little toys. And here we are. We are out here at uh, the brand new raid farm. Uh, this is Logical Geek Boys design. Uh, basically, we're up here at, oh, where are we? 160. Um, up there, we have a spawning platform where all the pillagers and ravagers and everything spawns. Um, down below us, way down, uh, just about two blocks above sea level. Um, you see that little tiny glass box, uh, that is where the makeshift village is. <clears throat> and then for us, all we have to do is just walk over here and drop down this chute, which makes it so that our feet basically just fall right into range of the village. And then we shoot back up this water column. And while that is happening, uh, the raid spawning starts and everything starts appearing right up above us. And then we go down, just right underneath all these boats, uh, which are meant to capture the vexes. But we just go right down here, and then we just hit all the pillagers. So as you can see, I have bad omen, so I'm ready to get this farm going. So what we're going to do is I'm going to drop down into the chute, uh, and then while right when I come back up here, I'm going to yeet you guys up top so you can see everything happening up there. And then I'm going to get situated down in here uh, to start to to start off in them I don't know why I'm hiding back here all right so here we go oh, right oh oh shoot they're already already coming let's get up top all right see you in a second Alright, and that's it. And now, as you can see, we got Bad Omen again from taking out that, uh, that wave of raids. And so what we could do is actually just drop right on back down uh, and trigger the raid again. Uh, and then just plop right back up here to the top, uh, get situated, and uh, look at this. <laughs> I, I have to fix this. Uh, it's it's uh, clearly not fast enough, so everything just gets piled up there on the top. Uh, but it's slowly making its way down here into the system. As you can see, we have tons of goodies. But there we have it. That's how we're getting the Totems of Undying for the shop. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to Logical Geek Boys uh, tutorial down in the description below. I highly recommend for you to check it out. Uh, it's excellent. Uh, he goes through the entire process. It's super easy to follow. It's about a 30-minute build, uh, so it's something that you could just complete super quick. 
it's it's very light on resources. I think you need like I don't know, maybe sixteen repeaters. Uh, it it does it doesn't need much. So definitely recommend for you to check it out. And so since we're done here, let's go ahead and head back into the shopping district. First, let's go ahead and get rid of our whoops, get rid of our bad omen, uh, so we don't trigger anything when we fly back by our base. All right there we go, all good to go. Uh, looks like the sun is going down, so let's head on back. And we'll head out to the shopping district, and uh, we'll start taking a look at uh, what we're going to do. So, uh, see you in a second. And here we are, back in the shopping district. And right behind me is a brand new shop. Not, not the brand new shop, not, not the one that we're going to make today, um, but it's the one that I made before, before today. That one. It's great. I love it. Welcome to Miron's Iron Nuggies. Um, I don't know why I can't say that right. Miron's Iron Nuggies. Uh, Iron Nuggies? Nuglets? Miron's? It's, it's our new iron shop. Uh, love, love the design. So yeah, so this is, uh, the brand new iron shop for the, uh, for the district, for the server. God, I don't know what I'm trying to say. And, um, I've been in here once, but I figured I would check again, see if, uh, see if there's been any sales. But the big thing about this is it's made me realize that it's October. And we're not, we're not really dressed for the occasion. So I think I'm going to change that really quick. Much better. Now I feel like I'm in the season. Here, hold, hold, wait, hold on. Hold on, take a look. Take off all this. You might be wondering, am I wearing a mask on a mask on my face? Yes. Yes, I am. All right, well, that's the new shop. It's me, Ron's Iron Nuggies. Um, and then right. Oh, there's a, there's a zombie under the ground somewhere. Uh, super temporary bridge. Um, don't judge. I know. I know. It's, it's horrible. Don't judge. This just runs along Sunny's place. It's just hiding back there behind the trees. Uh, and it heads on over to our cemetery. Speaking of the cemetery, let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you were around during the last Slaughtercraft episode, you saw the state of the cemetery. And you know what? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's trash. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I'm pretty sure I was just done with recording and just wanted to be like, okay, yeah, look, everything is great. Let's just throw a bunch of blocks at it and just make it look noisy. Newsflash, noisy is not always better. In fact, sometimes less blocks is better. So, uh, here's what we've done. We've turned everything blue. And you know what? I love it. I love it. It's so much better. Uh, still work in progress. I still want to add way more detail. Uh, but the terrain, terrain is good. And I still have some blocks to clean up from from how it used to look before but undoubtedly i believe that this is this is a better route than the moss blocks and all the sold all just all the noise that we had last time uh gotta sleep so i've also gone through here and uh i've actually set up a little I, i've set up more of the candles for those of you on the server, uh, it's still not open just yet. Uh, I haven't figured out pricings for the candles, but but we're getting close. So now now we actually have like green candles over here. I'm probably going to do uh, maybe stacks of 16 or buy an assortment uh, like, you know, a, a diamond gets you 32 assorted. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. And then down here, we got the purple ones or pink ones. We got some orange ones. 
Oh, and then over here with the purple. Hello, handsome. Got we got the purple over here. So so yeah, still trying to figure out pricings. In fact, if you have an idea of what I should do for pricings, uh, comment below. Let me know. Other other members on the server, what what do you want? What do you think would be a good price for them? Let me know. Anyways, we're not here today to work on the cemetery. We are here to work on our new shop, and I think a great place would actually be in the nether, uh, except for, here's the problem. We don't really have a working nether hub. So we're going to make a shop in the nether and we're going to create a nether hub today. That's the goal. That's, that's what we're here for. This is the sorry excuse for a nether hub. Uh, so what I want to do is first, I'm going to start by opening this room up. We're going to make it, oh, fa fairly large. Uh, so there's going to be, you know, a little bit more of a separation between this tunnel that goes down towards the nether fortress. Uh, we have the tunnel out that way that goes towards the outer lens, which has all the 1.17 content. Uh, we have the pillager outpost uh, down that direction as well to get our bad omen for the raid farm. Uh, and then this direction we have, uh, we have myself. We got my mushroom kingdom out there. Uh, and then we also have wild and insane. Uh, they're both out there a little bit past, uh, past my place and the guardian farm. Oh, and the guardian farm is also out that direction. So, so yeah, so we're just going to go through here and we're just going to open up a bunch of this, uh, and make a nice new fancy little nether hub. So I've gone ahead and opened up the room and I've actually moved the portal. Uh, so the portal is now right over here, kind of off to the side. Uh, I need to figure out what I'm going to do about the magma. Um, unfortunately, that's also part of the tunnel aesthetic. So I might have to rethink this. Um, I might put the Totem of Undying shop here. Uh, either that or maybe that'll link up. No, that's not going to link up to Andy's place. I'm Yeah, uh, I'll put either decoration or a shop there. Um, this is probably going to be a tunnel for the future. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, behind us is going to be the adjusted tunnel, uh, out to the outlands. Uh, and then this right here is the tunnel out to the wither skeleton farm, the s desert, the mesa, uh, the pillager outpost, and then tunnel out to our place. Uh, so what I got going on here is I'm cooking up some copper. Uh, I'm going to make some copper blocks that I would like to put here in the background, um, and let them oxidize and turn green. Uh, preferably that's, that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, and then I'm probably going to put maybe slabs in front of it. I think that would be a nice little touch. Um... Still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the floor. I might do a glass, a glass aesthetic. I don't know. We'll see. styles is this welcome to easter island come inside this is this is my place this isn't easter island for each chicken head in your base there is one giant head wait how many chicken heads are in my base all right i assume these count okay two and three four is there any hiding upstairs? No? Okay. So four heads. Um, let's go find them. I know. This is a little bit of a tangent. We'll we'll get back to the nether hub. But uh we got we gotta go find these and 
Oh, and look at that. There's number one right there on top of the creeper farm. Is there, is there anything hiding in it? No. Uh, here, let's fix that. Who did this? This has to be Andy. It's chickens. It has, it has to be Andy. Okay, so one down. Let's go find the others. Fly on over here. Oh. Found number two. Over here by the uh, nether wart farm. Anything in here? No. Okay, two down. Oh, that's three. Right here behind the trade hall, right next to the iron farm. I'm going to assume there's nothing in here, but, you know, let's check. Oops. Give me that pack. And where is... You know what? I feel, I feel like he is unintentionally giving us a tour of my base. Gotta sleep. Gotta sleep. Any minute now. Any minute. Yeah, I, f I feel like Andy is forcing us on a tour of our own base where's the fourth one this is so we haven't checked over on that side of the island but let's check over here by the farm and there it is number four all right andy i did it i, f I found all of them what's my reward what do i get do I just get a, a beautiful tour of my base? I mean, I mean, that was a beautiful tour. I did appreciate it, but, uh, is there, is there any kind of finder's fee? Uh, anyways, let's, let's get back to the nether hub. Wait, hold on a second. What? What is that? What is happening? Right up here where I usually, I used to start my episodes. Oh, well, look at that. Powder Snow, still not ready. Insane. Well, I wonder who this is from. All right? That's it. Claimed insane. Added to the list. Now, I guess, now we got to prank him as well. So let me know. Comment below. How do I get back wildcard? And how do I get back claimed insane? We gotta, we gotta get them. Gotta get wild card for the chickens, and we gotta get insane for this, this lovely, lovely tag above our area. You, you couldn't even, you couldn't even remove the, the foundation. Lazy, it's lazy. I'm just kidding. Thanks for the gift. Wait, hold on here. Did someone come and blow out all my candles? Oh, just all of you. That's, that's it. That's it. It's war. Uh, by the way, since the last cut, I went a little overboard. I, I basically got in the groove and, well, just, here, I'll show you. And here we are. Welcome to the new nether hub. Not entirely sure about the ceiling, but for now I love it. Uh, I, I really just tried to push myself uh, out of my comfort zone. I really wanted to 
make something with some like clashing yet complementing colors if that makes sense like i feel like the the turquoise or yeah like the cyan the turquoise goes really well with the purple uh i have the orange also i feel like complementarily clashes with these colors I, there's probably some color science behind it you know like conflicting colors that you're actually supposed to use because they actually complement each other i i don't know i i just wanted to use some blocks that i haven't used before that's i just wanted to push myself so i don't know let me let me know what you think but uh the the copper is finally starting to oxidize uh in the background um i also as i said earlier i got rid of the mushroom lights we have those up here in the ceiling uh, but I put the crying obsidian back here. I might still change that out for maybe maybe a purple terracotta. Uh, that that could actually be quite nice. Uh, added in some uh, ocean monument. Wait, prismarine. That's why can I not think of prismarine? Yeah, added some prismarine walls. We have some prismarine bricks and prismarine up here on the ceiling. Uh, we also have this little temporary well. Uh, I'm probably going to drop this way down and do the fog effect with layers of glass. Um, maybe. Probably. I, I, yeah, probably. And then, uh, we still have the temporary spot for a future tunnel, if needed. Uh, these are some spots for, so we have the, the portal to enter right there. Uh, we have the totem of and dying shop right there which we'll head over to in a second uh we have a an available spot here and then we have the uh uh the respawn anchor uh for the nether right here as well which i still need to put a wall around and here's the shop totes my goats this is where you could come to get your brand new polishy shiny totems of undying uh, and speaking of which, if you're curious as to how I did this, we actually have, it's not a mod, uh, but we have a data pack here on the Slaughtercraft server that uh, allows us to manipulate armor stands. So this is actually just an armor stand holding a totem of a dying, and then I use the book to uh, shove it back here and, and like position it and so that was, that sounds naughty, but I, I like moved it around to be inside the block, uh, and floating there. And I feel like it does a really good job at, um, I don't know, showcasing what you're buying. I hope, I hope it does that. But, uh, uh, we still have the price set at one diamond, uh, per totem, just because they're so easy for us to obtain with the, the farm. But I actually did some, I did a couple or I did a little minor tweak compared to uh to what we did in the last redstone episode speaking of which if you haven't seen the last redstone episode it was actually our first redstone episode uh I'll have a link down in the description uh, and maybe even up above but I'll have a link down in the description so you can actually go by and check out the tutorial for how we put together this vending machine but let me actually show you some of the tweaks. Um, so if you if you try to cheat the system, uh, the messages that get spit out uh, will actually come from this dropper uh, from right underneath us. Oops, let me go ahead and close that back up. And then uh, for the time being, let's get behind the scenes. Uh, this is where I'm gonna put a like a, a shulker box or a chest right up here full of totems uh, and then anytime that one is spit out from this dropper it's just gonna it's just gonna refill it uh, so just like we had in the redstone episode uh, we have our item filter right here which takes the diamonds and then we have our filler blocks uh, in the back that can't get stacked with anything else because we renamed them uh, and then the the collection chest for where I could come get my earnings uh, is right here 
the what we did differently is if you remember from the epi if you remember from the redstone tutorial uh if someone tried to cheat the system it would actually trigger the dropper twice so it would spit out the item that you tried to purchase the totem with and then it also spit out a message uh, i actually wanted to get rid of that that double tick so we set up or i set up this little monostable circuit right here which basically all it does is it the signal that comes from this hopper it just turns it into just a single quick pulse uh and then that line so when when the item goes through the hopper uh it triggers that comparator the observer sees it that observer triggers this piston which uh moves this redstone block right over here which then activates this line and then this line comes over and then activates the dropper that is right underneath the player uh, but it just does it as just one pulse so you just get one activation of the dropper so you don't get multiple items uh, being spit out and the reason why I wanted to do that is I, I feel like I have it pretty well labeled as to what you're purchasing and how, how much you have to pay for it so if anyone comes by and puts uh here if anyone comes by and then you know puts a piece of dirt in uh i actually want to keep that uh so you know if someone comes by and if they pay with emeralds or if they try to pay with rockets i i figure it's just going to be like a donation so hey thanks thanks for supporting the shop right and then of course uh you still get your little message uh, this one says, can't you read the sign? Uh, and I actually filled it up with multiple messages. Uh, this one says, I said diamonds. Here, I'll show you. I said diamonds. Oops. Oops. Let's get rid of that one. Let's do one more. You again? Yeah, I like it. And then we'll do another one. Spit that out. Let's grab that. Thanks for the donation. Um, and then also if you if you put in multiple blocks here, let's do that. So you put in three blocks. Uh, it might activate it twice. Yeah, okay, so that that one got it twice. but uh, for the most part, if you put a couple items in, it's still just gonna be one receipt uh, that is spit back out at you. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw these back in here. Put that there. That guy there. Pick that back. That back up. Uh, and then, of course, for the actual purchasing, let's go ahead and grab some diamonds. We will grab three. So I can show you. So put in one. Ooh, and there we are we got our totem here let's get rid of a couple more blocks uh the nice thing is is uh the purchase or if you want to buy multiple at once uh you actually can so i'll put in two diamonds and i get two totems so that is working out great let's uh let's go ahead and refill for the time being okay we got a few in there all right, well, that's it. That's Totes My Goats. Um, it's open. Uh, everyone on the server, uh, it's open. So feel free to stop on by and, and make your purchase whenever you would like. Oh, and speaking of which, I put it right across from the portal. So basically, these two are the most traveled areas. So I basically made it so that right when you come out of the portal, you can see the shop right along the way. Uh, if you're traveling back from Wild or Insane or My Place or the Guardian Farm, then it's still one of the first things that you see. Um, but yeah, again, I'll I'll have the link in the description for the the Redstone tutorial for how we actually put together the vending machine, uh, and then I'll have you know a link down below for Logical Geek Boys Raid Farm design from way earlier in the episode, and uh, just. Thank you all for stopping by. I hope you had a great time. 
if you're still here and you honestly are enjoying it, you know what? Throw me a like, throw me a subscribe, maybe even tell your friends. Um, but just thanks. Thank, thank you for stopping by today. I hope you all have a great, a great day. Later. And that's it. Slaughtercraft episode four, all done and dusted. Um, I don't know about you guys. But I find it that it's really hard for me to start recording an episode. But when I get into it, just once I get the process started and I get into it, it's just so much fun from there on out.